I am Thor, son of Odin. As long as there is life in my breast, I am running out of things to say. Great, another broken white boy for us to fix. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always in. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Wakanda forever! And what up, Internet? To another episode of Views from the 616, the blackest MCU podcast in the multiverse, powered by For All Nerds, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And it is one of your hosts, and just one of your hosts, Tatiana King, aka the Book of Ashanti, aka T'Challa Bread, Doc Aki, Tesseract Thompson, Little Vision Vert, and the coldest winter soldier ever. My podcast partner, Ben Amin, is taking care of some business. So I'm stepping in on his behalf because I just want to give you, I want to keep you guys engaged. I know we have lots to talk about when it comes to She-Hulk. So I'm going to give you what we are now calling Tati's Take. And let's go on everything She-Hulk episode two. Um, As we told you before, we got these episodes early. So I actually don't even know what the title of this episode even is. I'm sure it will be revealed later. So don't tell me I forgot about it because I didn't because I don't have it. But what I do have is my take on what I loved about this episode, what I disliked about the episode, and also maybe some Easter eggs that I just wanted to point out. So first off, things I loved. I would say, number one, I really love the fact that we are now getting to see the formation of this superhuman law, the superhuman division that apparently Jennifer is going to be in charge of. I do like the fact that we're starting to now see the normalization and integration of, of legal presidents, of how socially, how people deal with the superheroes around them. I mean, typically what you've been seeing in movies and TVs is some big bad occurs or some big bad comes down from the sky or something terrible occurs. You see the Avengers fuck shit up. They trade hands. They throw hands. I mean, you don't get to see what really the effect is on the people. And really now you're starting to see that, but you didn't before. And then also like, how does that affect society? And that's one of the things we praised about shows coming out like She-Hulk, because you actually do get to get that conversation between the characters themselves and also just the regular people on the ground. Like, Yo, this is how this affected me. When y'all threw abomination through 10 buildings, y'all killed half my family. Like shit like that. Like I, I, we always talked about that, Ben, I mean, and I, and everyone who listens to the show, just about the real world, quote unquote, implications of the actions or activities of all these superhuman people. Um, and now we're going to still, eventually we're going to get into the fact of saying mutants, but we're going to now finally get the, the, the comparison and contrast and the the reasons behind why things happen and how the, how people around them have suffered um or or and for some people maybe good things happen to them too but just the fact that you get to see cause and effect i think that's really powerful so to see this happening within she hulk to see jen walters be dubbed czar of all superhuman um legal issues um, I think it's really cool. And you get to see how that affects American society specifically. They were very clear to mention that this is for U.S. law. We have no idea how things could potentially be different in other countries in the Marvel Universe if what they if they're watching to see what the U.S. does and then maybe we'll emulate that. Maybe the laws will be made and cases will be won or lost from Jen that will actually set precedents that will then be used in other places in the world. So we never really know. But the fact that they're even talking about that, it's really cool. And as we know about She-Hulk, this is more of a realistic type of show, as realistic as you can be with people turning into hulks. But the fact is that you are still seeing like implications of life. You see Jennifer going on the date naps. You see her, how she's interacting with people, how people are interacting with her, how people at this point you're starting to see that people only really want her for being she hulk there are a few people who who appreciate her for her namely as we see her family and her closest of friends or colleagues but when it comes to the outside world you don't really see at least yet too many people who just fuck with her for being jen walters it's like okay that's cute but where's she hulk so i say all that to say really 
that that superhuman law and the idea that we're diving into that, I think it's just really great. And I mentioned it a little bit while ago, you get that additional doorway for mutants because now you're talking about um, mutant rights and now you're talking about superhuman rights. So I think it's just really essential to how the rest of the MCU is going to come along. Also, I would say I really like the tie-in from this Shang-Chi movie with Wong fighting Abomination. If you saw that film, you did remember a scene where you saw Wong um, fighting Abomination in the underground fight club. Well, now we see the direct connection within She-Hulk because that whole thing, that whole act- activity actually bleeds into the same timeline of when Jen decides to take the Emil Blonsky case um, to help free him from prison. And I just once we talk about when we talk about integration within the larger MCU, obviously cameos and 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 um, supporting characters like Wong always being around is really cool. But I really like to see the direct correlation with events that happened in within the timeline, and it also helps give you some bearing as to where in the MCU timeline you are because that. <laughs> um, abomination being caught up in the the underground fight club happens at the same time as the events of Shang Chi. Then you kind of know, okay, this is where we are in the timeline. This is probably what's going to happen next, or what happened before, and what remains to be seen. Uh, I want to put a note here that actually I got from Ben right before he he dipped. He mentioned that uh, he really loved Abomination as a reformed criminal. Uh, somehow in the MCU prison works. And I, I mean, it's funny, right? At least from my perspective, it's, it's funny in a, in a variety of different ways, mainly because we, we always, a lot of us have said, you know, prison doesn't work, right? Um, especially for people who shouldn't really be in there. Now, I'm not saying abomination trying to kill her cousin doesn't warrant being in prison, but as you can see, he was also essentially under mind control. He was on that super soldier serum. He was on the stuff and he was losing his mind a bit and, and he was being used as a tool from the government, right? Which superhuman isn't at this point, but just that fact that they can say, you know what? The fact is maybe maybe being put away for a while to, to cool your heels. Maybe that will get you better. I don't really know. Um, I don't even also don't know how he was treated in prison either, because even though this is a super, super, super max, it doesn't feel or seem like the typical prisons that you, the average person would be in or have to deal with. Like when we are talking about horrible conditions, horrible treatment, stuff like this. So I don't know. I don't know if it's this type of prison works. I don't know if he, you know, again, this is just MCU logic, but I guess him being going away and and learning and finding out about his, what, seven or 12 uh, soulmates (laughs) somehow helped him. So that's just something to think about. All right. So now let's go into things we disliked. The tone. I, and again, this, this is also a note from Ben, I mean, but from my perspective, I do agree with him. The tone does sometimes wear thin. And for me, that just means just the tonality of the show and how, again, heavy on the fourth walling, heavy on the sarcasm. I'm not so sure that that's going to like be cool going forward. Like it's kind of feeling already feeling a bit played out a bit it's starting to get a little old I, I and I know this is like this is only the second episode how do you feel that way well after watching this episode for the fifth time because again we do a lot of rewatches and and notes before we talk to you all we get to see and hear and feel the episode from a lot of different angles and after each we rewatch I started feeling a little bit more and more run down not really sure what that is. I, I, maybe it's the pacing, even though it's a pretty quick show, especially as we mentioned on last episode, it's a short show. But I, it, the, the tone is just, I don't know. It doesn't feel as bright or, or I don't even want to say colorful because that's not the point of this show. It's just maybe something's missing. Um, while I think it was, it's fun, the first episode was really fun, I don't know. I'm just not feeling this episode as much. It was just all right to me. And the other part that came up about disliking is as I'm 
listening and watching Jen and following along with her and agreeing with a lot of, of the things she's saying and approach, I'm also kind of looking at her like, I don't even know if I really like her. And this is going to potentially be a controversial point for some people because my question really is, you know, is Jen Walters or this iteration of Jen Walters even likable? I'm personally getting a little bit of Dr. Strange vibes from her. And when I say that, I mean me personally. I don't like Dr. Strange as a person. I still don't. I think he's a rough idiot. <laughs> he's just rude as hell. Um, and I like I would not be his friend. Like I wouldn't go out with him to eat or hang out or anything like that because he's an asshole. And yes, granted, that's his who he is as you know, in a lot of the more recent stories and things like that. But I don't know. I'm just He's just not somebody that I would want to choose to be around. And I'm kind of getting those vibes from Jen. Now, let me be even more clear. I'm not talking about arrogance or anything like that. Like, Dr. Strange has this annoying arrogance to him that really pisses me off, generally. And I don't see that from Jen, so it's not that. Maybe it's her level of sarcasm. Maybe it's just how she kind of just is a know-it-all. And... Yeah, she has the backing to be a know-it-all, just like you can claim Dr. Strange has the backing to be a know-it-all. He, he's went to school, he's done this, he's done that, he has this talent and that talent. Sure, sure, sure. But it's just something about their character that rubs me the wrong way. And I don't know if that is going to continue as, as the show goes along. I know we have a long ways to go. This is only episode two. We have, this is a nine episode series. So we're going to learn more about Jen and be more acquainted with her. So perhaps I just need time. But out of the two shows, if you told me, yo, do I like Jen Walters like that? I'd be like, she's all right, fam, I guess. I don't know. Not my fave at this point. And, and perhaps that's the point. She's not meant to be your fave. Perhaps she's just meant for you to really understand a character that has lots of complexities, as, as any other person would. And I add on top of that, she's a She-Hulk. So... Maybe that's the point, but I don't know. It's just something about her. I can't put my finger on it quite yet, but there's something about her. I do want to mention the characters that we become acquainted with in this episode. We have Holden Holloway, played by Steve Coulter, who is a partner at Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzberg, and Holloway. We also, as we talked about him before, but Abomination and Mil Blonsky, played by Tim Roth. He's back from 2008's The Hulk, which at the time starred Ed Norton, as Bruce Banner, the Hulk. And he explained why he his life was going down bad and he should be forgiven and all that. And we do even see that this version of Bruce says that he has been forgave Emil. Emil sent him a nice letter and a really nice haiku. So they've put all the past behind him. And that actually leads into an Easter egg that I thought was cute when Bruce, uh, when, when Jen's having the phone conversation with Bruce and telling him she's going to take the job to defend Abomination. Bruce tells her, I'm a completely different person, literally. And of course, Jen looks at the camera knowingly like, ha, she laughs. Like, again, bringing the fourth wall. As mentioned, that character was played by a completely different person. And for those who have followed along in the history of, of the live action Hulks, at least in the 2000s, that's not even the first time we saw Hulk. We saw Hulk prior in Hulk, the Hulk movie in 2003, played by Eric Bana which was then followed by The Incredible Hulk in 2008 with Ed Norton, until now where you have your current Hulk played by Mark Ruffalo. And that's it. I know this was a little bit shorter, but I just wanted you to get my take on how I felt about episode two of She-Hulk. Please let me know what you thought. Did you agree with my assessment? Do you Are you absolutely in love with Jen Walters slash She-Hulk? Do you not really vibe with her so much? Why or why not? Also, just tell me what you thought about the episode in general. And th tell me what you think about the tone of the series. Do you like the fourth wall breaking? Do you think it's corny? Whatever it is, let us know. Contact at foralnerds.com. You can also hit us up on the socials at foralnerds, as well as at views from 616 on Twitter. Make sure you also support us. Thank you so much to the people who are already supporting us. Hit us up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash foralnerds. Every tier is a very special tier. You get privileges and special things that only the financial fan fam get. So we thank you for that. And thanks to everyone, to the millions and millions, I hope it was millions, <laughs> of people who are rocking our merch out there. 
tpublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds you can get a variety of super dope designs created by friends of for all nerds we have the inclusion is revolution design our miss menace design our wong was right design make sure you buy that tea and wear it to every mtu film you go to because he keeps being right at every corner okay and we have new designs coming as well so make sure once again tpublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds you go there to get these designs on t-shirts hoodies mugs masks whatever you could think of we got it and as always thank you for listening to us follow us on your favorite podcast platform we are everywhere for all nerds in order to listen to views from 616 and make sure you're following us on twitch twitch.tv slash for all nerds Follow me, I'm at Tatiana King, and also follow my podcast partner at DJ Ben Hamid. So until then, we'll see you for episode three of She Hope.